is a crucible of relentless war. presents a chance for the brave to bring about an age of reckoning. I come to the Dwarf High King as a herald of such times, and so I find myself at the King's right hand. My presence is timely. But dire news comes from the south. Greenskins flock to the banner of a cruel war boss. Now, my liege, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, leads a mighty throng from Karazakarak, smashing aside any foes that block our path. Bearer desires to return the Karaz Angkor to its former glory. Then he must rid his lands of vile greenskins. Those gathering within the shadows of Everpeak are a good start. Time of the Great Wars. The entire world was engulfed in conflicts. Race battled race in a constant struggle for supremacy. In the heart of all this was the dwarves whose mountain kingdoms stretched across the spine of mountains. High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer ruled from his throne in Karaza Karak, but the dwarf clans were fractured and divided. His capital city was surrounded by enemy orc clans, the dreaded beasts who sought to destroy dwarves and after them all other races. It would be the king's duty to destroy the Greenskins, gain the respect of his peers, and unite the Dwarven clans. This would be his solemn goal. It began with the king going straight after the nearest orc horde camped just east of Karaza Karak. It was a narrow valley corridor down which were the orc settlements. It was all or nothing. The king would destroy them, or they would destroy him. Bringing his dwarves to the top of a ridge, he lined up the crossbowmen at the front and backed them up with his hammers and axemen. As the orcs came at them, they had plenty of time to fire into them. Then the hammers and axemen launched into them. And finally, the king himself assaulted their leader. The orcs could take no more, and they ran for their lives. The king followed them to their hovels and launched an evening attack upon them. There were orc reinforcements coming from the flank, so the king placed a contingent in the woods to watch out for them, while the others moved cautiously forwards on the front. Mount 
The orc flankers united with their other army, and they all attacked the front together. So the dwarf king threw in everything he had. They enveloped the orcs, and victory was theirs! Scouts reported to the king of a goblin ambush in the pathways to the north, but the king had plans to the south, so it did not concern him. He was also concerned with trying to bring the other dwarf kingdoms into the fold, so he sent his diplomats to slowly bring them to his side. They answered with reticence. King Thorogrim would have to prove himself in battle so they would trust his leadership. So he continued to move along the corridor after the other orc settlements. His army fought in the snow at Mount Squighorn, where he sent a force of miners forward to hide behind a boulder. There they sneaked around the side of the enemy while the main force took it on from the front. The miners were stopped by an orc horde, but it was no matter. The green skins of the main line were no match for the dwarf warriors. The dwarves took the loot. King Thorogrim taking the greatest prize, the fencer's blades, which he went on to use as his personal weapon, and they continued on. The green skins, knowing they were outmatched, made an unholy alliance with the bloody spears to unite against their common enemy. With their forces united, they began to move up the valley toward Kareza Karak. It mattered not to the king, for he continued his march around the path of the mountain, past the volcano, into the heart of the Greenskins. There he conquered one of their greatest villages, taking it for his own base of operations from which to launch against more enemy armies. Having proven himself through conquest, other dwarf leaders began to join the alliance, and a real dwarf empire began to emerge. This also inspired other great dwarves to join the ranks, such as a guild inspector, Dalad Grunson, who joined the king's army. The king wished to continue his march, but rather than going the long, slow way around, he cut straight through the mountain, arriving on the other side close to two of the orc settlements, ready to take them both on. His successful march down the mountain had convinced the clans of Zufbar and Barakvar to ally with him. Barakvar went as far as joining in a confederation with them, the first official, full-fledged alliance of the dwarves. Encouraged by Karaza Karak's success, Bernach Grundedrak moved on the nearest orc settlement. They placed their miners atop a tall hill to hold it while most of the rest of the army hurried up to join them, and a flanking force to prepare on the side. Let's be about this. We are the gunners got there first, shooting down orc spearmen who rushed up the hill. The rest of the force hurried up the hill as well, and the flankers came around the side. The orcs were routed in no time, and Barakvar had its first victory. Their loot included a rune, which went to Birnok. Birnok took the city, and from his chambers he determined to be a different sort of commander, one who led through example, fighting alongside his men, so his growing skills reflected a personal ability to fight. The orcs, meanwhile, sought revenge on King Thorgrim, so they sent armies from both of their villages to fight him. Seeing he was outmatched, the king pulled back, but there was only so far he could go. One of the armies caught up with him, and so he would have to fight them both. With everything on the line, King Thorgrim placed his miners forward to hold a tall hill while the rest would move up to be with them, much the same way Birnok had won his battle.
He set archers on the flanks this time to protect against attacks coming from those directions. As the battle took shape, it was clear that the orcs were coming in hard from the right side with warg riders. The archers would soon be overwhelmed. The dwarves could turn to face this threat, but Thorgrim realized that the entire orc army had not yet arrived. It would be best to take the offensive and destroy this army before anyone else got there. So he sent his melee troops charging forward and left the archers to delay the warg riders so they would not flank them. The archers held them off valiantly, and the king decided to reward this heroism by leading a charge against the wargs with some of his axemen. In the center, the dwarves began to push through, and many of the orcs were retreating. The king came back and joined the middle of the fight, taking on the orc commander. Soon the dwarves had pushed through and had many of the orcs on the run. The miners rushed after the enemy bowmen to clear them out. The king continued to beat on the orc commander, and soon he was on the run. But as Thorgrim took a breath from atop the hill, he saw that his miners had been worn down by the archers and the survivors were on the run. The dwarves were winning, but they were tired and the bow fire was heavy. So he pulled his soldiers back down the hill to hide them from the raining arrows. They regrouped just in time to countercharge a horde of orcs. Thorgrim charged as well to try to get rid of them as quickly as possible. Soon the archers made it atop the hill and rained arrows down on the dwarves. And more warg riders charged around the hill crashing into them. The dwarves won each bout, but with each one their energy was drained and they were slowly losing their numbers to wounds and morale. But Thorgrim saw that they now only had archers, so he led charges at all of them. They ran, but the orcs were faster than them and they kept pulling away and firing, pulling away and firing. Shoot the lasers! 
Soon, all the dwarves were wearing out, fainting and falling on the battlefield from exhaustion. It finally came down to only King Thorgrim and two units with him. They were chasing down goblin archers, but then more came from other directions. Thorgrim and his company fought off one group, then another. Then resume their chase for the archers. But the constant chase was too much for him. His men fled, and at last he abandoned the field. His army scattered. The king disappeared. His conquest was at an end. The future of the Dwarven Kingdom was in question.